Good morning once again and uh, welcome to The Breakfast. If you're just joining us, our final conversation this morning is on a dialogue with regards Nigeria's unity. The National Youth Council of Nigeria has called on President Muhammad Dubari to set up a national dialogue and, uh, of course, a face of what uh, the country is currently dealing with, uh, with regards divisions here and there and uh, the need for, you know, Nigerians to come together to speak on uh, unity and the way forward. Uh, this morning, we're joined by uh, Mr. Solomon Adodo, the President, National Youth Council of Nigeria. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Nigerians, and thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Let, let's start by, oh, I want to start by asking if what we really need is dialogue or a president and a government that understands inclusivity, inclusivity um, you know, unity, justice, fairness, and all of that. Do you think that's maybe what we instead should be seeking at a time like this, instead of having another conversation uh, that may not lead anywhere? Uh, very clearly, what we need is dialogue, because all what you talked about uh, can also be addressed on the table of dialogue. Uh, issues of inclusiveness, uh, issues of development, uh, all of the issues can be properly addressed on the table of dialogue. Now, if we look at it also uh, from other prisms, we had a time where uh, militancy was the wave in the Niger Delta region. What started it out? It was dialogue. Uh, you know, we had dialogue and then we had a way forward. Uh, let's see strategies on developing the communities. Let's see strategies on ensuring that the oil producing states have a share of this or of that. Dialogue was the first step before all other actions were taken. Today, we have the issue of these uh, bandits that are going on, ravaging and destroying everywhere. We need to also dialogue, not with the bandits in this instance, because for us at the National Youth Council, we maintain that anyone who has identified himself as the enemy of the Nigerian state should be dealt with appropriately. The Nigerian state cannot be brought to her knees by renegade elements. You understand? So that's very clear. How be it? Can we begin to engage more with the youth in this region so that they uh, prevent them from even going into this banditry? Because you find out that uh, when you have more idle hands, you know, they, are, they can easily be conscripted uh, or recruited into these heinous activities or these heinous crimes. If you come to the Southeast, the issue of marginalization, the Southeast keeps shouting about, you know, we need to dialogue and know the way forward. Uh, uh, there is also a clamor for power shift uh, in terms of the presidency going to the South, and people are saying, oh, it should be the turn of the Southeast. We've not had a shot at this. So we need to really come to that round table where we sit and look each other in the face and say, here is where we are getting it wrong. Here is why where we feel slighted, and this is the way forward. You know, because we we should maintain our unity as a nation. That's our stand as National Youth Council of Nigeria. We believe in the sovereignty of the Nigerian nation. We believe in our unity as a nation. But then we need to discuss certain terms. So dialogue is the surest way forward. In this box of dialogue, okay. we can begin to unravel other things such as. Uh, political inclusion, development, and so on, and uh, the other factors. Mr. Dodo, we would get, you know, in, in a minute, just into, you know, the different cessationist calls and the need for national unity. And we understand the importance of interreligious, interethnic dialogue, you know, to foster peace and, you know, create conversations around inclusivity. But do you think the government doesn't already know the challenges we're facing? You know, as my colleague earlier mentioned, the issue, isn't this about non-implementation of the agreements that we've had time and time in the past? It should be made clear that uh, uh, dialogue should never end. Dialogue is continuous, but again, we should also implement. And one other factor where we have got it wrong as a nation is where we come to the table of dialogue. We exclude the youth. So inclusion of youth is the first thing. And uh, in all of this, when we talk about this dialogue, it should translate to development. It should translate to how can we see uh, the economic factors in the Southeast come to life, the economic factors in the North come to life, Northwest, Northeast, North Central, uh, Southwest, South, South, everywhere. How can we get the better part of ourselves? 
How can we explore our comparative advantages? How can we complement each other in the areas where we have a shortfall? So when dialogue becomes more of productivity and development, you find that there is a clear cut pathway. When dialogue includes the youth more, you understand, we also see that there is sustainability. You know, whenever the drumbeats of war uh, are, are being beaten, who are those who are put in the front line? Mostly young Nigerians. You understand? Even if people in their uh, mid-40s to late-40s are the ones making the shout, you discover that the greater percentage of the armies that have been conscripted into all of these are in their 20s and in their 30s. So, so can know. we have a situation? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I, I, I want, you know, of course, to go deeper into this um, and where, of course, the fears that many people would have are. Um, do you have dialogue with, I mean, don't you think that you also need to be having dialogue with the government that uh, sees the need to implement some of these, you know, uh, decisions and some of the recommendations? Remember in 2014, there was a national conference, uh, the national dialogue that, you know, we spent billions of Naira um, setting up and, and doing, and those recommendations have been, for now, abandoned. Um, how much more dialogue do we need if we don't have a government, or do you think that we have a government, rather, that will be willing to implement some of the recommendations of these conversations that we're having across the country? Uh, because you, might, you can talk from now till, you know, 2023 and even beyond. And if you don't have a government that understands the need for these conversations and understands the need to implement the recommendations of these uh, conversations, then it's, it's another you know, avenue to waste funds, don't you think? Uh, now, uh, first of all, what we need to do is to look at all the discourses we've had over time, including the 2014 CONFAB report. We need to revisit it. There are several other uh, fora that have been convened to talk about our national unity, to talk about issues of restructuring, resource control, and so many other factors. We need to revisit all of the things. How be it at this point, presently, that we are? We have, let, let's get down to brass tacks directly. We see in the Southwest, uh, groups are coming up to call for the Odudua Nation or Odua Nation. Uh, in the Southeast, the IPOB are still demanding for the sovereign state of uh, Biafra. Biafra. You know, and then all of these challenges are there. So we need to bring our brothers from the southeast, from the south south, from the north. Let us first understand ourselves as one. Let's make something very clear. Uh, if we go or eviscerate the reports of the 2014 CONFA, there are key areas that need to be looked into and implemented. Now, uh, the issue of true federalism is also one thing which we need to begin to uh, take more seriously and uh, begin to see how we can bring this into action. How be it at the moment, what we should be doing is to see how we can save our nation or salvage our nation from the brink of collapse. There is so much hatred being spilled out presently. So can we, first of all, halt that train of hatred can we uh, begin to see ourselves as united? Let, let's make some things very clear. Those clamoring for this nation or that nation. When you go to Odua Nation, uh, for instance, today, tomorrow you still hear cries. If somebody, maybe let's say there's an Odua Nation comprising of Lagos State, Ogo State, and uh, Ekiti and the other states. The man from Ekiti might say, I'm being marginalized, and so on and so forth. The cries will still continue. Go down to our various states again. You find situations where people from certain regions of the state don't even have a stake in decision making, much less producing people uh, to lead the state. Okay. You know, I can give instances of various states. All so right. the first point of our dialogue is to see how to halt that train of hatred. Once we have halted that, once we have salvaged our nation from these uh, negative brinks, because it's like we are sitting on explosives and any wrong trigger can cause anything at the so moment. Adodo. So let's avert the uh, Adodo. downward slide and then we begin to look at those reports. Okay. Deeply. How soon 
do you want the government, do you want the president to convene this national dialogue? Uh, for us at the National Youth Council of Nigeria, it's as soon as possible. In short, if it can be done now, we will appreciate it. Uh, but beyond waiting for Mr. President to convene this dialogue, we also on our part, we've begun massive consultations right uh, around the nation, talking to our members, talking to the youth. Hey, let's not be used as tools of division. Let's not be used as tools of hatred. So before the mega dialogue where we hope uh, to see uh, these stakeholders coming. And remember, we said the youth should be properly included because this is the area where the government has failed. Inclusion of youth in this, in, in, in key decision making. We have had several security meetings to talk about issues of Boko Haram, to talk about issues of banditry and so many other criminal activities. But in these meetings, who attends these meetings? You find governors are there, you find ministers are there, the president is there, but the youth are not there. And these are the foot soldiers. So when we come to this point, I will implore the government to ensure that there is sufficient youth in right. But we are not resting on our arms, we're not folding our arms and waiting. We have begun to take certain steps. We have begun our own consultations around the country. Recently, I was in the Niger Delta region talking to the youth and we are going to the north and we will go around the country convene this meeting and right. let each other so know that yes we are important uh, the south is as important as the north is important and in unification we are stronger hmm. all right we we'll, would uh, of course um, see where this leads but thank you for now uh, for speaking with us and for having this conversation with us i uh, would uh, definitely look forward to another uh, very interesting conversation with you Thank you. Thank you very much for having me and God bless us. Thank you. All right. Uh, talking sports next. Yes, we are talking sports next. Wally uh, Scott is on standby. We're talking about the uh, Super Eagles, AFCON qualifiers after the break.